out in the Formidine Rift, 12,000 light years from Sol, lies Zorara, a megaship within the Seradiate JXF C0 system. In the year 3270 AD, the vessel launched as part of an exploration initiative known as Project Dynasty. The goal of the Zorara? To catalog potentially terraformable and dirt like worlds for future colonization. The fate of the voyage will be the subject of a later time, for this episode is dedicated to the namesake of this derelict ship. The Seradia JXF C0 system is located in the Formidine Rift, also known as the 31st Galactic Region. Navigation within the rift is plagued with low star density, making exploration a difficult task for short ranged vessels. However, its relative proximity to Earth, coupled with its lack of attention, with dedicated commanders focusing their efforts on reaching the more prestigious Beagle Point or the Galactic Core, makes it a prime target for large-scale exploration voyages. With this came a reputation of risk, opportunity, and the loss of exploration vessels to the void. However, the advent of private fleet carriers greatly diminished the dangerous and foreboding characteristics of the fringe regions, the Formidine Rift being no exception. Compared to years past, commanders can now embark on deep space voyages from the comfort of a private capital ship provided adequate tritium supplies. This is a luxury that those partaking in Project Dynasty did not have. The ship's name comes from Gomes Eanes de Surara, a Portuguese chronicler and writer, who lived between the years 1410 and 1474, during what would later be termed the Age of Discovery when European countries with strong maritime presence ventured into the Atlantic Ocean to discover new lands. Whilst not an explorer himself, Surara acted as the main chronicler of Prince Henry the Navigator after 1452 and served in all subsequent expeditions sponsored by the Portuguese crown in the 15th century. Prince Henry in turn commissioned many of Surara's most notable works, including the Chronicle of the Discovery and Conquest of Guinea, and Conquest and Discoveries of Henry the Navigator. Something immediately apparent is how Surara never writes of his own motives or ambitions. He speaks highly of the prince, but otherwise acts as an invisible narrator throughout these chronicles. Thus, his opinion and view on Portugal's imperialist forays can only be inferred through his praise of Prince Henry's ideals. Much like how the Surara was but one part of a greater machination that was Project Dynasty, the real-life Surara was a cog in the wheel of Portuguese expansionism and conquest. In particular, he remained subservient to Prince Henry and his motives. From this point onwards, Gomez Surara and Prince Henry's goals intersect. The introduction to the Chronicle of the Discovery and Conquest of Guinea, Volume 2, not written by Surara himself, mind you, but by Sir Charles Raymond Reesley in 1899, quotes one of Prince Henry's motives as the wish to know the land that lay beyond the Isles of Canary and that cape called Bohador, for that up to his time, neither by writings nor by the memory of the man was known with any certainty the nature of the land. Indeed, Prince Henry's personal goals stretched far beyond profit and fame. He envisioned a vast Portuguese empire, a mighty hegemon that would cover a large portion of the Asian and African continents for economic gain, as a new world had not yet been discovered by European powers. The prince also championed the spread of Christendom to these lands, bringing more people under the guise of the Catholic Church. With this came conquest on two fronts, one for resources and one for conversion a precursor to ever-expanding European colonization in the following centuries. One can even make the argument that Prince Henry, and by extension his chronicle Surara, single-handedly impacted the course of European colonization over the rest of the Age of Discovery. In this sense, Surara's chronicles became an invaluable resource and inspiration for future Portuguese explorers even if his work greatly embellished Prince Henry's achievements and legacy. 
The Surara 3270 holds more importance than previous locations, such as Katanyuk Palace and Penga Poshkin Port. She proved the existence of the club, a secret organization which claims to lead humanity. In stark contrast, the real Surara has been limited to a footnote in the Age of Discovery, serving as a figure far more influential than himself. Regardless of significance, the ship still shares some similarities with Gomez de Surara. Both focused heavily on exploration and colonization. The chronicler focused on acquiring new land for the Portuguese Empire, whilst the ship focused on finding planets for contingency plans. Both entities ultimately became footnotes to their respective findings. The chronicler became overshadowed by greater and more prestigious exploration efforts, whilst the ship's demise revealed a conspiracy that threatened the tranquility of the bubble. In contrast with the Chronicler, the megaship would never return to home port, or any semblance of inhabited space.